Alrighty, my bookaroos and cowabungas, we're going to dive into chapter six. So this is going to cover uh, mitosis, meiosis, uh, gamete formation, and a little bit of uh, how errors can affect things, okay? So uh, we're going to breeze through some of this because like PMAP, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase should be super good for you because that was, that was definitely gen bio, but we're going to review it. Uh, and then I'll spend some time on sort of the new stuff that's getting introduced, okay? All right. Uh, we are not covering some of the boxes in this chapter as I'd rather um, focus on different things. So don't worry about box 6.1, box 6.2, and toolbox 6.1. So there was a bit of a time gap between when Mendel actually did his experiments and then he published and then nobody really paid attention until right around 1900 when he was rediscovered simultaneously by a bunch of different geneticists and botanists and plant breeders, including Carl Korins of Hugo de Vries and Eric von Tischmark, which all did a super amazing thing and uh, attributed um, his findings. They had basically done similar studies and then found that he had done them previously and gave him credit for having found them before they, oh my gosh, uh, before they had done their work. So uh, props to them. Hugo de Vries actually coined a bunch of terms that we still use in genetics like gene, alleles, and mutation. Uh, and so they're discussed in part 6.1 of your book very briefly there. And let's move on to mitosis, where the chromosome number is preserved during cell division and that if you start as a two N cell diploid cell going into mitosis, you will be uh, you will have two cells coming out of it, and they will both be diploid. They'll both have two copies of each chromosome. So mitosis is part of the eukaryotic cell cycle. Um, if we're talking about prokaryotes, there's actually a different uh, process going on, which we'll talk about later. But in eukaryotes, we have uh, first the G1 phase after a cell is freshly divided, where we the cell grows and commits to eventually being uh, divided. The DNA synthesis phase, uh, which is shown by S, and then we have growth two, which is generally quite short, not quite as like a quarter of the time as this chart shows, and then we go into mitosis, which compared to the rest of the cell's life is quite rapid. Okay, so we're going to look at mitosis in the context of the cell phases before and after it. So we're starting with the S phase here, where the DNA is replicated, so the chromosomes are extended, they're replicated while they're open, and then eventually they condense, and then the centrosomes duplicate, okay? And so we're going to have our two sister chromatids aligning up sort of before the uh, mitotic phase, and when prophase starts, our chromosomes are fully condensed, and we have our centrosomes forming at the poles, we have the mitotic spindle forming, Okay. Then the microtubules are going to attach. The kinetic cores and metaphase is where we're actually lining up here. So prophase and metaphase last a long time. I don't know if any of you did the gen bio, um, like you look at a plate of freshly dividing cells and you count how many of them are in prophase, how many in metaphase, uh, anaphase, and telophase. But the majority of cells are in prophase and metaphase, meaning if you you know graph that out by time, prophase and metaphase are taking the longest amount of time. Then anaphase is usually pretty quick. They just pull apart. And then telophase is so fast I skip to the next slide. Oops, okay. So the compounds that's actually pulling the chromosomes apart is this uh, tubulin, which is a, a polymer of protein. Okay. So it's made up of a dimer here. You have the alpha subunit of the tubulin and the beta subunit. And these align in pairs along an axis, and you actually have a polarity there. You have a negative end of the microtubule and a positive end just based on the charges of the amino acids in these two subunits, okay? So the negative end connects to the centrosome, and then since our DNA is negatively charged, it is gonna connect to the positive end, which is right by the chromatin, okay? So we're using the charge of the DNA again in order to help move it across the cell. So these centrosomes um, also have their own sort of what they're doing in the cell cycle here. Okay. So while we're in growth phase, before uh, we get to our DNA re replication, we have the centrosome with two centrioles. During DNA replication, they are duplicated but not separated. This remains so in the growth phase. And then during mitosis is when the centrosomes separate and get pulled apart along with the DNA so that each fresh cell starts off with one centrosome containing two centrioles. Okay. So it has its own cycle of 
So these here, where we have the centrosome and the microtubulin unit starting to form out from it, are called the asters. Okay, kind of looks like an asteraceae flower and such. Okay, so the they are going to, as the cell is preparing to divide, move to opposite poles of the cell and send out these um, aster formations of microtubules. Okay, and so they're going to both join at the uh, centromeres of the sister chromatids. And they're going to sort of touch each other, but not join, but form this sort of pairing between the two in order, which will be used later on to push the asters further apart and split the sister chromatids. Okay. So the kinetic core is the region specifically where the microtubule uh, attaches. And the centromere is sort of the area of the DNA specifically where they pair up to form this kinetic core region. So in this case, the microtubule is going to line there, and then it's going to actually push uh, toward the centriole of the edge of the cell. So kinetic cores have two faces. They actually have the external face, where the spindle fibers are going to be attaching, and then they have an inner face, which is facing the other sister chromatid. Okay. So over here, here the two interfaces are aligning, and we have that poleward tension pointing outwards with the microtubules attaching to the outer face of both sister chromatids. Okay. And once they are aligned, as here in metaphase, that's when they're going to start, uh, they're going to pull away as the microtubules retract and break, break down at the um, centriole side. Okay. And that's going to allow us to have, and then this pinch occurs, the actual cytokinesis, the dividing of the cell, and two cells will form, and then we have our two daughter cells. But during mitosis, we have um, a few checkpoints that the cells sort of have to reach before they continue onwards. Uh, in the uh, metaphase, are the microtubules fully attached to each kinetic core? Because if they don't, you're going to have one pair of sister chromatids pulled to one side and not actually split. Um, got my clicker here. So, and then in growth one phase, have the growth processes completed? Are we ready to start um, synthesizing DNA? And then here after um, S phase, is replication finishes DNA damage repaired before we move into another round of mitosis?